can help us understand it. Okay. So we've already talked about how how big or really really how small the atoms are. Atoms, of course, are really really small. It's the 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 number of atoms in the orange is equal to the number of cherries in the earth. But now we want to look at the cherries. So I don't have any cherries, but I have a ping pong ball. So let's say the ping pong ball, it's a little bigger than a cherry, but pretend this is now, uh, how big is the nucleus inside of the, of the atom? And of course the nucleus would be like the core, the center. It would be the, oh, the pit of a cherry, right? But how big is that pit? That's what we want to look at. And so to illustrate that, we're here at the Woodland Park uh, football stadium. And so what we really want to do is to say, how big is that? Okay. Now, I've also brought with me one other thing. It's a tiny little bean. Okay. So this would be like the size of the pit that you would put inside of the, of the cherry. Is this the right size? So is this, would this be appropriately sized for the nucleus? Well, the answer is no. We're going to actually have to blow the nucleus up, or probably the atom up the size of the football stadium. If you blow up the ball to the size of the football stadium, it's unbelievable. So Mr. Bergman is down there on the 50-yard line. He's got his little bean, and that bean is the nucleus of the atom, and the whole radius of the atom is about the size of this football stadium. That's huge, and the nucleus is really, really tiny. The crazy thing is almost all of the mass of the atom is in that nucleus, is in that bean. So think about the most dense bean in the world you could possibly imagine. We're talking like, tear your arm off dense. It's so, it's so heavy for such a small size. Wow. Yeah. It's small. It's tiny. That bean was small. But it's extraordinarily it, dense. If I you were know. holding it, it would tear your arm off. Yes. Yeah, so like, yeah, in fact, you know how dense it is? How dense is How it? dense is the nucleus? Well, if you took a cubic centimeter, all right, everybody t take your index finger, and then find your fingernail. Okay. Okay. Your fingernail is about one centimeter in uh, in uh, width. All right. So three dimensional size of my fingernail. So if you have a box one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, made out of nuclear material, n made out of nuclear material, it would weigh uh, two thousand tons. Two thousand tons? That's correct. Holy cow! So go out. How go do out, you know this stuff? Because I'm amazing. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Go take your average small car, like a Honda Accord or something like that, okay. out in the, in the parking lot. All right. That weighs about one ton. Okay. So, so 2,000 Hondas, 2, the size Hondas, of my fingernail. The size of your fingernail. Wow. That's dense. That's, That's very dense. That's really, really dense. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. And then we meet our last guy. All right. Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr. He was from Germany, and he talked probably German stuff, I think. Is probably. that a German accent? I don't think so. I don't no, know. I don't know what that was. <laughs> I don't either. So Niels Bohr, what did he say? Um, well, he said that the, the, uh, the electrons, electrons are, are okay. moving around the nucleus like uh, a planet orbits around the sun. Ah, yes. Uh, orbits. Yes. I see. Okay. Right. That's it? Um, yeah, just they were they're moving in a nice little line, and they uh, occur in particular energy levels. Yeah, he called them shells. Yes, energy yes. shells. So he had energy shells, and the yes. electrons they move in particular shells, yes. right? Are you, you're fading into Russian now. I think. Is that Russian? He's, I thought uh, it was German. I don't know what. That I don't is. either. I try to be German. I don't know. No. Okay, so he had the shell model, <laughs> right. right? Okay, so what's the summary? All right, All right. let's just take a look. We've got uh, uh, several guys. Dalton. Right. Dalton. Basically, Dalton. So, folks, you should write this down. Just kind of a uh, yeah. just a real quick picture. Dalton believed in tiny spheres. He yep. didn't know what was inside the spheres. No, he thought that was the smallest particle he could. Yeah. Thompson said, uh, "Yeah, they're spheres." So he agreed. Uh huh. Except they have electrons in they've them. They've got electrons, and there's this. It's the it's the the cookie dough guy. Right. Right. Plum pudding cookie dough. Yeah. And then we meet Rutherford. And he said, uh, Thompson, yeah, there's parts of the nucleus, or there's this nucleus, but it's oh so tiny. Oh tiny, dense, and positively charged. Yeah, and the electrons are somewhere on the outside. He didn't know no. this story. They're outside and somewhere. lastly, and there's, there's still another guy, but we'll deal with him later. Yep. Um, and that's Bohr. And Bohr said, yep, got tiny, super duper tiny nucleus. Now the electrons are traveling like planets around the sun. And they, uh, yeah, and they, they do they, that in particular energy in shells. Specific energy yeah. levels. But, and he was wrong. And he was actually wrong. But that's okay. We'll talk about that in Unit 8. Yeah, we're not going to get to it. The present-day model is actually called the quantum quantum 
mechanical model, and yeah. we'll get to that later. You need yeah. some more science. And it's built off of what Bohr did. I shouldn't say it was wrong. He just was incomplete. Yeah, that's probably good. Yeah. So really, it's not like any of these guys was wrong. It just progressed. That's it just what they knew at the time. As time went on, right. and that's 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 what we exactly. Did. So cool. um, that is the history of the atom. There it is. I think I'm going to go eat an orange. Yeah, I, I'm pretty hungry. I yeah. think we should do oranges. All right. All right. Sounds good. All right, bye, guys. Bye.